Well, James Howard served our country with great pride, but when he passed away at 75, he was a lonely digger with no listed next of kin. So his life possessions were given to his carer, Tina. That was 30 years ago, and all she wants is to return them to his long lost family. Deep down, if there's anything he would have wanted would be to be reunited with his family. So if I can find them, it would just be amazing. When Tina Webke cared for James Howard in the mid 1990s, one subject was taboo. He was just very withdrawn and very emotional, very, very emotional, always tears welling in his eyes when he spoke about or didn't really want to speak about his family because he said he did have a family once, but that was pretty much it. James was living alone in Ermington in Sydney's West. Tina was in her 20s and worked for home care for the New South Wales government. He was the sweetest man. Um, I would turn up. He had struggled to get out to the garden. He'd walk out and I, there on the table would be a little vase with a little flower or a rose, whatever he could find to have. And he'd set up a morning or afternoon tea. Whatever he had in the cupboard, he would put out for me. He was a very, very sweet man. So what, he lived alone. What, what did he do? He was very isolated. Uh, he didn't leave the home very much and he loved his watches. He was a watchmaker, so he would just tinker with his watches all day. He looked forward to me coming every week. That was just a huge thing for him when I knocked on that door. The smile on his face was just so sweet. Did he ever talk about the war? Not a lot. He said he was in the service. He was very proud of his days there, but um, often he'd become quite emotional when he would start to talk about his days in the army. Tina was forever puzzled about James's family. She knew he must have had one, but she wasn't ever really sure. There were not a lot of photographs around. Um, he never talked very much about his family. When I did bring it up, did he have a family? Did he have children? He'd become very emotional and change the subject and then start talking back about the army or his love of watch and watchmaking. Tina was away on a family holiday in 1996 and returned home to the news that James had died, aged 75. I'd found out um, that he had passed away, that he'd been placed into a nursing home and that he had died and that he was penniless and that he'd been declared a pauper. As the only person with any sort of friendship with James, she was asked to attend the nursing home to collect his belongings. What she was handed shocked her. I was given a bag of his belongings and there were photographs in there, photographs of his life with a wife, with children. There were birth certificates, a will, information about his time in the army. And I was shocked because I didn't know that these people existed. It was like a treasure trove of his life. I got his ranking, got his numbers. He had some uh, military uh, badges awarded, which were stolen. So I went to the Department of Veterans Affairs and they helped me to provide payment for his funeral. I had a lovely funeral for him where my mother and my sister attended and um, he was cremated and then his ashes returned to me. Tina still has the ashes and everything else she was given that day. It's amazing that he never said anything about his family but he had all of this, it's all high quality. It's amazing when I look at these images, I was so shocked at how beautiful they were, but mostly to see these beautiful children. Um, there's one in particular I love where he's walking in Sydney holding her hand and she's got an ice cream. And it's just That's so this sweet. One here. Yes, yes. Just look at the smile on his face. So yeah. proud of his little girl. But looking at these photographs, the quality of them, they're just astounding. They're just beautiful and stunning. Incredible, absolutely incredible. But then you look at the photos of his wife, we don't even know her name. No. We don't even know her name. But you look at these photos here, that is a classic sort of mid-last century movie star look, isn't it? To me, in some of the images, she's just like Marilyn Monroe. She's just, look at her, every gorgeous, hair was in yeah. place, the, the outfits, the, everything. While the name of his wife remains unknown, what is known is James grew up in Dunedin, moved to Australia, they were married in Newcastle, and their daughters were named Donna Patricia Howard and Carol Betty Howard. And they would be about 70 to 80 years old now if they're still alive. The daughters were named in their grandmother's will. 
After 28 years, what would it mean to you to find his family and reconnect them again? I'd be honoured to give him back to someone in his family, but I just don't know what happened. And that's been the mystery for so long. And I've just held on to him because I just didn't know, I didn't feel it was right. I just couldn't just place him somewhere without trying to find someone belonging to him to give back these beautiful photographs and memories of his life that obviously meant so much to him because that's all he took with him when he went to the nursing home. Such a mystery and if you think you can help Tina find James's family, please get in touch with us. We'd love to return his few belongings to them.